By now, you've likely seen the horrific headlines out of Kenya. At least a hundred bodies have been found in shallow graves, the result of a Christian cult that apparently told members they would meet Jesus after starving themselves to death. A lot of the victims appear to be children, making this already tragic story somehow even worse. The body count will likely rise by the time you see this, though there is also a growing list of people who have been rescued, at least a few dozen and counting. And separately from all that, a manager for Kenya's Red Cross told CNN that 259 people have been reported missing by their families, including 130 children. It's not clear how many of those people might be part of the religious group. But what the hell is going on here? The victims were all members of the Good News International Church, led by Pastor Paul McKenzie. Police began looking into the graves after receiving a tip that the bodies were buried in the eastern part of the country. McKenzie was arrested by police on April 14th, shouting, Praise Jesus! as he was escorted away. A little more about this McKenzie. The televangelist began his church in 2003, and he's been a lightning rod for controversy ever since. That's mostly because he has a habit of urging members to dissociate from the rest of the world. He has told members to quit school, leave their jobs, stop eating worldly food, whatever that includes, refuse medical treatment, and destroy their government documents, like IDs and birth certificates. They were also told not to speak with people outside the cult if they had any intention of getting to heaven. By the way, in case you're wondering how we know this was a cult, I'm reminded of the old joke. What's the difference between a cult and a religion? In a cult, the person who started it knows it's all BS. In a religion, that guy is dead. What makes this whole tragedy even sadder is how Mackenzie could have been stopped earlier because everyone seemed to know he was trouble. Just this past March, he was arraigned in court after allegedly telling parents to starve and suffocate two children. He was then released on a bond equivalent to 74 US dollars. He had also been arrested in 2019 on separate charges involving the death of children, but once again, he paid the bond and was set free. Both cases are technically ongoing. In 2017, he was again arrested over his anti-education preaching, though that case didn't go anywhere. It's not clear if the recent wave of starvation-related deaths began after his release in March, or if some of those bodies had been underground even longer. I found this quotation from a local politician pretty haunting because it came after the politician spoke with and questioned a surviving cult member. The month of March was set aside for all the children to die. The month of April was set aside for the women to die. May was for the men to die. And they found most of the bodies in April. Very convenient for the men. Mackenzie claims he shut down the church in 2019, as if that should absolve him of any connection to these fatalities. There are also unverified reports that perhaps some of the members of this group attempted to escape only to be killed. And they believe that's the case because at least one body recovered from a grave appeared to be otherwise healthy and not emaciated. Kenya's president, William Ruto, recently said the cult leader belonged in prison since what they were witnessing was akin to terrorism. Hard to argue with that. But there's one aspect of this story I haven't seen people talking about. And part of that, I think, is because this is a story out of Africa. I think it's easy for people in the US to see these headlines and think, well, that would never happen here. That's the sort of thing that only happens in cults, in countries I'm not that familiar with over there. If you read comment threads about this story, you see a lot of people acting like this is some sort of anomaly with victims who must have been extremely gullible, all led by a guy with incredible charisma. You know, something like that. Something that would not happen here unless it was a very unusual situation. Something like Heaven's Gate or the Branch Davidians. And I would caution people against that thinking, because I don't believe this is some sort of stretch for Americans. I don't think 
Paul McKenzie is the equivalent of David Koresh. President Ruto of Kenya added that McKenzie pretends and postures as a pastor when in fact he is a terrible criminal. But the truth is, he can be both. What he allegedly did was not unchristian, it was just unorthodox. And let me explain that. I have no idea what Mackenzie may have said to convince all those people to take their own lives as a precondition to meeting Jesus. And I am just assuming the victims agreed to do this and not that they were forced to do it, which may not be a fair assumption. And Kenya has long fostered religious cults. It is true. However, there is nothing strange about a religious leader convincing people to harm their bodies often with fatal results and often in the name of Jesus. In the US, there are Christians right now who use prayer as a substitute for medical intervention. Faith healing, they might call it. And children have paid the price for it with their lives. There are Christians who justify child abuse as an extension of biblical wisdom training up their kids with a rod lest they be spoiled. There were Christian and Orthodox Jewish leaders during the worst parts of the pandemic who ignored safety precautions and crammed themselves indoors without masks or social distancing because they believed their religion demanded they meet in person and in a way so you could see their faces. There is no shortage of religious leaders urging members, even now, to avoid life-saving vaccines. Hell, they will even write you a religious exemption if you need it for school. There are pastors who believe a sexual assault victim ought to bear her attacker's baby, no matter what it may do to her body, and no matter how old she is. What is that, if not religious harm inflicted on another person, oftentimes with their permission. I mean, the body count in Kenya is horrific, partly because the numbers are increasing in large batches relatively quickly. And I don't want to diminish how serious that is. But we should be similarly outraged by the slow drip, faith-based cruelty occurring in the US all the time, sometimes resulting in death, and pushed by religious leaders who do not care if their followers suffer because of what they preach. The idea that a religious leader could convince followers to put their own lives in danger, using faith as the brainwashing weapon, is not limited to cults or foreign countries. It happens in our backyard too. It happens all the time. It's not limited to one religion, even though there are plenty of Christian examples. And it's not limited to just well-defined cults, which often mix poisonous substances with food or drink rather than jump to starvation. It may even be more pernicious in certain situations because some behaviors, like vaccine denial, put other people in harm's way, not just members of the group. And that's before we even get into the Christian nationalists attempting to legislate their archaic beliefs in order to cause maximum damage to the entire country. Who needs a weapon when you have the Supreme Court and a bunch of state legislatures at your disposal? If Mackenzie is found guilty of these deaths, he deserves to be punished accordingly. Religious freedom can never be an excuse for this kind of irreversible damage, if not homicide. But what he appears to have done is not a stretch from what countless religious leaders do all the time. Using God as leverage to convince people to make terrible decisions is, unfortunately, all too familiar.